Amen, amen, amen. And so it, there's a little term that I came up with, and I want to continue to echo it. I want to put it in my own words about the, about the Ten Commandments. We're throwing that out. We're throwing prayer out of school. Amen. So ministers, all of us, pray for ministers. Our, our first job is to, uh, the word that I use, it ain't in the dictionary. Don't look it up. You can't Google it. It's not out there. The word I use is sanitize. Amen. In the gospel, you first must sanitize people. You must help them to understand that they're sinners. Have you been sanitized? Because if you ain't lost, you can't be found. He didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. So you call yourself righteous, but you still could be a sinner. Amen. You're just a good sinner. And so the Ten Commandments help sanitize people. The, the job of all gospel preaching ministers is help people to realize they're a sinner. Amen. The Ten Commandments help us realize we're a sinner. Then, and then Christ came and said, well, I'm the Savior. Then you can point them to the Savior. So you first have to sanitize them. Then you, then you sanitize them through the gospel. Then you clean them up. But if they dirty and don't know it, a whole lot of people are dirty and don't know it. They got their own definition of righteousness. And just as dirty, amen, Jesus' letter to the seven churches, he said, you think you're clean, but you're not. You think you're good, but you're not. Amen, amen. Let's be sure, saints. Let's be sure, people, amen, of this world. You first must sanitize, and people don't want to help. You don't, that's how you help a person come out of sin. You have to help them see that they're a sinner first. You got to sanitize them. And then you sanitize them through the gospel, washing of the water by the word. Amen. Washing and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have to help them. And that's exactly what God's commandment does. And so I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to point you to another major point. The end of the commandment was love out of a pure heart without hypocrisy. Another major point. If you don't have a moral standard, amen, you have a world out of control. You have a society that don't know up from down, don't know right from wrong. Amen. And it's very hard in these last days, ministers, to, to help bring somebody to Christ. Amen. Because the, the righteous man is doing wrong and he thinks he's still right. And the sinner man is doing sin, but he thinks sin is right. There's no right and wrong. There's no right and wrong. There's no moral standard. Amen. What kind of world are we headed for? Amen, amen, amen. And I want to say to us that is kicking out God's moral standard, I want to say stop it. Stop it before it's gone too far. Amen. I have to think about this other little song, too, that came to my mind. I'm going to get this out of the way. Amen. The Jackson 5 had a song that says, Stop the love you save may be your own. Stop it, America. The country you save may be your own. Stop it, so-called righteous Christian, because the soul you save may be your own. Stop sinning, because the soul you save might be your own. Amen. Amen. It's better to suffer afflictions with the people of God that, amen, Moses chose to suffer afflictions with the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, because he had a respect to the recompense of the reward. Amen. All these sinful thoughts, all these things that Supreme Court may say that's right. Amen. The Supreme Court going to have to stand before the Supreme Court in heaven for all those decisions that they have made and leading people the wrong way and getting off of God's moral standard. Amen. They have kicked the Ten Commandments out of the Supreme Court. They don't have a moral standard. How are they going to give moral judgment, ethics, sound judgment that would exalt a nation and you, they, they themselves have kicked it out. Amen, amen. So the society that we're headed for, even us that are striving to preach the gospel, people have no standard. You talk to people that, oh, yeah, I'm already saved. I don't go to church, but I'm saved. Amen. You talk to people that are sinners, yeah, I'm a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. We all sin. They don't understand the concept because they have left out God's moral standard. And the end of it was love. Amen, amen, amen. And I can't say enough about it. Amen. So we're going to go into the scripture. We're continuing on here. 
Amen. People desiring to be teachers, they don't know what they're saying. It says, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Verse 8. Now we're on verse 9. Knowing this, that the law is not made for the righteous. Amen. The law is not made for the righteous. You know, Jesus said he didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. You know why he came to call the sinners like you and I to repentance? Do you really know why? Because it ain't no righteous. Ain't no righteous. They self-righteous. Amen. They, they got a righteousness that's not according to God's righteousness. It ain't no righteousness. Amen. That's why he didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Amen. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy here. Amen. It says the, the law. Amen. It wasn't made for the righteous, man. Amen. Amen. But, but for the lawless. It was made for the lawless, man. It was to help to try to sanitize you. Before we sanitize you. Amen. It was made for the lawless. Amen. Amen. The lawless are the criminals. It was made for the criminals. Amen. And the disobedient. Amen. It was made for the rebellious. Sin is a rebellion. At the heart of all sin is a rebellion to our God. For the ungodly. The law was made for the ungodly. The ungodly those that have no reverence for God, you need to stop that. Amen. The soul you save is going to be your own. S is for save me. T is for take it slow. O is for oh no. And P is for please, please don't go down that road. That was the song that Jackson 5 sung in that song. They, the acronym for stop. S is for save it. Save your own soul. Save yourself from this untoward generation. If you be ashamed of me in this adulterous generation, I'm going to be ashamed of you when I come in the glory of my Father with his holy angels. It's just the truth anyhow. Think about it. Let it soak into your conscience. Amen. The ungodly, it says for the sinners. Amen. Those that have fallen short and that don't measure up to God's standard. Amen. They knew God and they glorified him not as God. They're coming up short. Amen. For the unholy. Amen. Or uh, no reverence to our God. You have no reverence. Amen. No fear of God. You've done forgot how to blush. Amen. For the profane. Amen. Pardon me here. It says the unholy. Those that are, are not pure. They call themselves right, but they're not pure in it. The Ten Commandment law came to help purify us. Amen. It says for the profane. Defiling sacred things. You profane, you defile sacred things. Amen. You count it as unholy. Amen. You count it as whole, oh, sacred things. You, you, you have no regard for them. That's to profane. You profane it. Amen. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Amen. Amen. Without a standard. Without, you don't have to be a Christian to understand God's moral law. It's good for the society, not only in church, but for the society, amen, to love your mother and your father, amen. When you throw out God's moral law, amen, people don't love their mother and father anymore, amen, amen. It says for manslayers, amen, homicide, murderers, for whoremongers, amen, for whoremongers, for fornicators, Amen. We got a double standard in our society. If a woman is, is promiscuous like a man, we tend to want to say, amen, that she is coming up short. But if a man is running around out there, we tend to want to say he's a player. No, you're not a player. You're a whoremonger. Amen. And you're not righteous. And that's sin in the sight of God. Having sex outside of marriage is sin in the sight of God. Amen. We're all here because of sex. Amen. But it was designed to be in a marriage. And we're going to have a lot more to say about that. God's moral law establishes the family. God's moral law established marriage. When you don't have it, amen, you're headed for a danger zone. Stop it. Amen. Amen. It says, for them that defile themselves with mankind. God's moral law, that's talking about homosexuality. 
Amen, amen. It's prevalent in our society. Supreme Court have made rules, but we're not going to be standing before the Supreme Court on earth. Those nine justices, we're going to be standing before the King of Kings, the Supreme of Supreme, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. That's who we're going to be standing before. And his standard has never changed. Amen, amen, amen. At the bottom of our page here on our, on our lesson, I wrote a quote that stood out in my heart that I felt God want me to deliver to the world. Love not the world. It said, all nations are under God's moral law. All nations. No matter what nation, what your origin is, you are still under God's moral law of righteousness. His standard for righteousness. And with them, they will empower traditional marriage. If you're under God's moral law, you'll have traditional marriage. You'll have traditional family. Amen. You'll honor the sanctity of life. We don't have, I know people say it's their body, but we don't have the right. What about God's rights? We're going to board out his rights? We don't have the right to life and death. God has that right. Amen. We will fight oppression. The first four commandments is toward God. The other six commandments is toward our fellow man. If you follow in God's moral law, you, you will empower and you will be against oppression. You will be against racism. You will cancel it out if you follow God's moral law. You will value our fellow man's property, his wife, his, his property, anything that belongs to him. Amen. You will establish a judicial process that values justice. And it's choose evil. It hates evil. Amen. You won't have a judicial process that says sin ain't sin. The judicial process should say sin is sin. Amen. No matter who you are, any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. God's moral law, those Ten Commandments. Amen. That prayer in school. Amen. That we kicked out. Amen. And before, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But I want to talk about that. We, we remove them from our court systems. Well, what system do we have? Vain jangling. Mob rule. Amen. Amen. We took prayer out of school in 1963. Amen. Uh, atheist Marilyn O'Hare. The vote was eight to one in the Supreme Court. They also Bible reading. They took it out. God's moral standard. Well, what do you have? Vain jangling. And so I took a note of some of the things that happened since 1963. Amen. This isn't just for the church. This is for society. Amen. The God's moral law is a picture of himself. He's just. He's holy. He's good. He's peaceable. He's loving. And the law that he gave, it's a picture of himself. Amen. That's why it's so important. It's still relevant today, just as it was when the day that God gave it to Moses. The penalty of it has changed. Amen. You could be saved through Christ, which means you could not be saved for under the law of Moses. That penalty was, was stoning. Amen. Thank God for this amazing grace. Stop it. Stop it, America. Stop it. Stop it. Stop making up your own righteousness. Stop making your own definition for sin. Amen, amen, amen. You're headed for a danger zone. Amen. So when they took prayer out of school, church attendance declined. Amen. When you took the Ten Commandments away, church attendance declined all over the world. Love not the world. Church attendance is declining. Getting less and less. There's no moral standard. There's no such thing as sin. We all sin. Everybody's sin. Only perfect man was Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're all righteous. No, you, you judging yourself by somebody else. Well, I'm better than him. Amen. Amen. No, you should judge yourself by God's moral standard. Amen. Church attendance declined. We start worshiping rock stars, movie stars, and sports figures more than we worship God. Because the moral standard has been taken out. Amen. Foul language start being allowed on the TV and on the radio. They used to, they wouldn't hardly curse. 
Amen. Now they got ratings for all of that. And all of that just goes wild. They got all kind of ratings now. Amen. Amen. And it's acceptable. Amen. Nowadays, if a movie don't have some cursing in it and a sex scene and somebody killing, you know, it don't make it at the box office. Stop it, society. Stop it. You're missing the guardrails to glory. Amen. Amen. Businesses open up on Sunday. There was a time when business didn't open on Sunday. I think they call it a blue law. Amen. Now they care about Monday. Sunday is one of their best days. It had more people at the malls and in the shopping places than in the church because we took out God's moral law. We don't know right from wrong. We do in our conscience, but we're overstepping it. And I say, stop it. You're headed for a danger zone. Amen. We don't respect mother or father. We disrespect our mother and father. Amen. That's one of God's moral law. Honor your mother and your father, that your days may be long upon this earth. We, we lost all of that. It's not being taught. Amen. Amen. Divorce rate skyrocketed, not only in society, but even in some churches, because we don't have a concept and a foundation of God's moral laws. It's until death us do part. And I heard a funny thing the other day. It's just funny, but you got to throw a little humor in there. It says, until death us do part. That means until I kill you or you kill me. <laughs> Amen. But even in marriage, let me tell you something about marriage. If you're not ready to make sacrifices, you need to remain single. Amen. Because there's no perfect marriage. Amen. All marriages have to be formed. You got to go through the process in sickness and in health for richer or for poor. Amen. You got to go through the process. Amen. It, it, it has to be formed. Amen. I think when, when God created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden. He told them to take care of that garden. Amen. Men, when you take on a wife, you're to take care of your wife. If she ain't happy, part of it is your problem. It's your fault. Amen. If you're not ready to make sacrifices, then you need to remain single. Amen. Because it's about a sacrifice and it's about two becoming one. Amen. Amen. And God is that third fold cord that binds it together. But if you don't have that, amen, to death do us part mean until he kill me or I kill him. But in, with God's moral law, it don't mean that. It means you form something beautiful. You become one. Amen. You go on down this road together until the Lord takes one of you in. Amen, amen. But when you took the God's moral law out, divorce rate skyrocketed. Same-sex marriage came in without being shamed. There's a time when it was shameful. Amen. And I'm not saying it to shame anybody. Amen. I'm saying stop it. Because the king of kings and the supreme court of supreme courts, who we're going to stand before in that day, it won't be these nine justices. They come and go. Amen. But the one we're going to stand before his law never changed. Amen, amen, amen. That came in, amen. Transgender came in. I'm not saying nothing against no one who is of that persuasion. That's not my job. I am not your judge, but you do have one, and I'm here representing my ambassador for him. Amen. You, 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 our job is to proclaim the message, amen, of the judge that's coming. Amen, amen. Elders are not respected. He pushed them away in old phone. You should respect your elder. You should take care of mom and daddy and see that they are well cared for as they get older. The crime rate increased. Amen. You know, there's even honor among thieves because of God's moral law. There's some things you do and some things you don't do. Even if you're a thief, if you got some kind of concept of what right and wrong is, but when there's no concept, Amen. It's not a guarantee, but at least you would have a concept. You'd have a conscience. 